Hi everyone, uh, welcome back to our webinar series. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, once again, I would like to introduce our, our IRICAD team. Uh, my name is Graham Hutchinson, Nelson Irrigation, uh, Walla Walla, Washington. Mike Noftal, uh, Independent Consultant, Washington State. Steve McCoon, Nelson Irrigation uh, in Walla Walla, Washington. Joe Vivier, the Global Support Person with IRICAD in New Zealand. And Ignacio Del Campo uh, with Nelson, Nelson Irrigation in Chile. Uh, here is our schedule. We are now on the, the uh, database overview, and this is going to be the first in a series of webinars on the database. Uh, please um, use the question and answer feature of Zoom to, to post questions. Today's uh, webinar will be presented by Steve McCoon, who has a lot of experience in IRICAD, and I will pass over to Steve. Para los asistentes de habla español, uh, por favor hacer preguntas por el menú de preguntas y respuestas. Trataremos de contestarles en español. Great, thank you, Hutch, and I will share um, my screen and um, get this presentation going. I trust that you see the uh, database key factors and components, which is the start of, uh, as Hutch said, a, a series of IRICAD uh, webinars on the databases. The databases are a very important aspect of what we do. So we're looking forward to spend some time on them today. And then uh, on middle, more advanced or focused topics as we move forward. Um, and do please Steve, use the- uh, we, We're seeing your- um your presenter screen, not the presentation screen. Ah, okay. Um, I'll take another whack at that, sorry. Uh, when you're doing a presentation in the great outdoors, things go wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, um, please allow me to, uh, to try, try that again. So is that better? No, we're uh, seeing so, uh, an edited screen. Okay, my apologies. Okay, stop here. There we go. Okay, thank you. Sorry about uh, that, everyone. So, um, the, the thing is to know about IRICAD um, is that it comes with uh, an included program called the Database Editor. Uh, IRICAD Database Editor, it's a really important part of the whole success of being an IRICAD designer and using IRICAD. So I'm gonna uh, click to where I can see a little bit better. So, um, the thing to know is IRICAD Database Editor is a separate program from IRICAD. So it won't, IRICAD doesn't automatically know anything about what pipes you may want to use as a designer or which sprinklers you want to use or valves or any of these components. They're all stored in uh, this uh, databases and you use the database editor as a tool to uh, tidy them up and make them what you want. It, it comes included with IRICAD. So when you purchase IRICAD um, or you acquire IRICAD, uh, it is included as part of that program. So uh, you'll have that available to you. But as I was alluding to earlier, it's really important that you spend time in the IRICAD database. Uh, everything that IRICAD knows about pipes or fittings or any of them, uh, uh, of the components that you use to build a virtual model of an irrigation system, which is really what you have IRCAD to do. It's not just a CAD program, but you're building a virtual model of an actual irrigation system uh, that you may try in a couple different ways, lots of capabilities as you've seen in the uh, past webinars and you'll continue to see in future webinars. But um, it's 
all of that stuff that IRCAD knows about irrigation components comes out of your database. So you as the irrigation designer need to spend time in the database making it just what you want it to be. Um, but when you do that, uh, IRCAD databases um, really provide an excellent way to um, customize your uh, databases. You can make it just what you want, tune it to the pipe sizes you want, make them available. There's lots of tools and we're gonna explore some of those today. Um, and if you're new to IRCAD, your IRCAD database editor icon looks like this. So it looks very much like, um, uh, you know, like what your IRCAD icon looks like, but it has the stack of disks uh, that would, uh, you know, be a, a database of items. So that's where your components will be stored. So um, IRCAD database components and key factors. IRCAD uh, allows you in that database editor, gives you a chance to customize your pipeline types and colors. So remember, part of the reason that we draw these irrigation plans is they're a communication tool to uh, help others who may be installing the systems to know uh, and make it an easy for them to understand what goes where. And so we'll have new and unique types for the color progression and the line type progression for different types of irrigation pipeline. Uh, all of that is set up in the IRCAD database uh, that you're going to be using. You have ability to customize your own hydraulic symbols and things for valves or sprinklers or whatever. Um, there's a huge array of symbols that exist in the IRCAD database, um, but you can create new ones. You can draw them in uh, IRCAD, uh, the symbols that you like, and save them as database symbols. Um, and we may be going over that in a, in a future webinar. Uh, I suspect that we will. But it's uh, all that capability and that pairing of an item to its symbol. We're going to look at that today. All of that takes place inside the database editor. Uh, and then making sure that you're using correct pipe sizing um, and allowable pressure u pressure usage. IRCAD will look at what is the allowable pressure that this designer wants to use in a pipe size. Um, how what's the inside not so just the inside diameter, but the allowable pressure. All those things come into play, uh, and it's described to IRCAD in your in your IRCAD database, and that gives you correct hydraulic reporting. Uh, which is an important part of some of the designs that uh, you've been seeing done in previous webinars. Um, it gets that information out of the uh, IRCAD database and then allows you also to create material lists. So often you as the designer are selling irrigation components, not just maybe you labor to install it, maybe not. You need to be able to sell parts and getting material lists correctly, accurately, out of IRCAD um, allows you to, to do these very complex things of figuring out all the little pieces that go into an irrigation system to do it very quickly with uh, IRCAD, um, but it all comes out of the database editor. So how does IRCAD uh, interact with this databases? There's a few points that we're gonna look at and describe those before we get into the database editor today. And so let's uh, take a, a look at some of these things. So one of the first things is that in IRCAD, and we've uh, touched on this in a previous webinar, but you go into uh, select your database in IRCAD of which database you want. You may be doing solid set big gun designs with uh, twig automation. You may be doing drip irrigation systems, uh, tape irrigation systems, solid sprinklers, and you can optimize databases for the types of designs that you do. You need to tell your CAD which database you're going to use for this particular design and uh, you can select that in IRCAD. So that's a touch point between IRCAD and the databases. And then there's a customizable pipe fitting matching table that allows you to do many things which we'll look at in a moment. That's a touch point for uh, IRCAD and then the design parameters themselves. So that's uh, a, an important one. So when we are gonna go and select a database for IRCAD to use, where that's done in IRCAD is you go into your settings menu and you choose 
you're um, under irrigation design specific, you choose your component database. That component database, and we're going to be looking at the tutorial one today, but you want to choose from that list of databases that you've created which one you want to use for that design. It's actually important that you choose this before you start placing hydraulic components on the design. If you forgot to choose it initially, um, but haven't started, you know, you've got the Google Earth image, maybe the field layout, uh, but before you start placing irrigation components, it's important to choose which database you're gonna do. And it's done under settings, choose irrigation design specific, and then um, you'll see the IRCAT database there. Secondly, the custom customizable pipe fitting matching table, um, you would go into the uh, design menu and down to pipe fitting matching table um, and you would choose that and that gets you to this. And so let me see if I can find my um, a little uh, pointer, perhaps not. But uh, this, this allows you, this pipe fitting matching table is really great. It allows you to create new pipe types uh, in this uh, field here under pipe types. Uh, we've got a huge array of them that exist already, like drip line one. Uh, and then you describe this particular pipe. Uh, and then it's important to have these because then you can choose them. Once you create them in the pipe fitting matching table in ERCAD, then they're selectable in um, a, as a pipe type when you're maybe adding new pipe types to your database, but they're created pipe types here in ERCAD. So you create the pipe types here if you wish, and then describe that pipe type. So what is its connection gender? So let's say for DL1, if we look at this here, that we're gonna say that that's a male pipe. So we'll need female fittings to connect to it that are a slip um style and that they're ldp and so this this describes that pipe to ericad when it does things like um one for drawing it but when it's doing pipe um uh, component fittings selection when you're doing your fitting selection it knows what types of fittings to go to that so dl1 would maybe be a, a drip line one uh, it's a male pipe that slip it connects with low density polyethylene fittings uh, would what what would be would be describing here, um, and then when we're drawing that on the design, how many degrees angle can we bend that before it seeks a fitting? That's what's described in this uh, area here, of maximum angle. So that allows you to uh, when you're not just connection connecting it to the database, but for this pipe type, when it's used. Um, how many angles can you bend it before it seeks a fitting? Uh, we get into things like extra allowance in this column here. So if there's snaking that you wanna be able to accommodate for, you may add 3% or something to this um, type of pipe type. And then it's gonna round up to something. This is rounding in this particular database I had open to the next meter. Um, and you could, but you could round it to the next 100 feet. Or, you know, if you're selling PVC pipe in 20 foot lengths, you may want to round it to the next 20 foot length, that type of thing. And so, and then we get into this column. You'll see, uh, you know, a lot of these are zeros. Um, and that would be perhaps a default uh, that it would go to. But when you have things like dripper lines, um, let's say they're drip tapes, those are sold by different amounts of roll lengths or uh, in the case of drip tape, maybe uh, uh, multiples of those. So in drip line one, in this description, it may be that the roll length, you may have entered in here uh, 2,500 feet. You may have the exact same thing in a different wall thickness uh, or different emitters or something like that, that would be DL2. It looks the same to IRCAD in many aspects, but over here, it's a, a different roll length. So the reason that we enter information into roll length is so that when you get your materials list out of IRCAD, that instead of saying he needs, you know, 72,000 feet of this particular pipe type, uh, you might need, uh, you know, 72 rolls of it. So it ba it's based on what your stock numbers are gonna be and what the lengths of that stock number is when you do your parts listing. 
So you can start to see the en normal, uh, the enormous amount of horsepower that's stored in your um, pipe fitting matching table as you create pipe types for use in the AirCAD database. And then uh, once it's in the AirCAD database enabled for use, then you're able to use it in AirCAD. So the customizable pipe fitting matching table uh, that you find at the bottom of your design menu, very, very helpful. And that's what those different columns mean. It's the filter uh, that AirCAD uses to be able to see the uh, database. And then we get into design parameters, this uh, third point of where AirCAD is it's got sort of a touch point into the um, databases is in your design parameters. And the reason that, and you, and you find that under the design menu, uh, and then um, let me get rid of these annotations. I don't know how to uh, delete them. Uh, I don't know, Hutch, if you're looking at the screen and it still has annotations over it, or if I, uh, I guess I expected those to go away. Um, and then uh, we've got design parameters and I'll uh, show you what those look like. It really has to do with uh, when you're in the um, a hydraulic analysis, hydraulic parameters, we're gonna be specifying, you as the designer would be specifying what your maximum zone velocities are in you know meters per second or feet per second for main lines or in your zone pipes. And that's only gonna be correct if the inside diameters of your pipe are correct. All of that's gonna be stored in the databases, which we're gonna look at in a moment, but we must get those correct from a hydraulic perspective if we're gonna be relying on velocity. And velocity is used not just in velocity sizing of your pipe, but it's also an aspect of your linear program. So if you're using LP or if you're using velocity, both of these are described in your design parameters and they rely on correct IRCAT databases. So um, now we're gonna uh, step out for a, a tour of that. I'm gonna end the stop share of, of that one, um, get my database up and running and then share my IRCAD uh, database editor program. Uh, hopefully you, you'll see that uh, now. Let me know if you don't see it much. Um, Looks okay. good, Steve, and the annotations are gone. Okay, perfect, thank you. So um, this is the AirCAD database editor. You know what the icon looks like, and we've uh, got it started already. And so um, as you go through this database editor, uh, there's tabs uh, across uh, all the different databases. But let's start right here at the start. This gives you a place to do things like create new databases where you would take this database, save a copy of it, rename the copy, and then uh, edit it. Let's say if we wanted to create one specifically for drip tape or something like that. It gives you the ability to merge databases. So you can call Nelson Irrigation or whoever uh, you know your uh, manufacturer is that you're getting information from and merge databases. So if you've got a database from a, you know, a friend or a manufacturer, you can merge those into a single databases and then edit those. It makes it for a very nice uh, capability. So that's where uh, that one will take you. You've got things like edit copy components. So if you are, let's say, taking the thousand series control valves, uh, which come in an enormous database that you can get from us, but there's you know, a thousand different component uh, variations in there and you want, you know, one at a time and you're going to choose and pick because you don't want to take all of them at once. Uh, that's done through the edit menu where you copy a component and then paste it into your, your other open database. Very, very helpful capabilities there. View is simply what are we going to be looking at up here at the top. Uh, uh, component databases, you're going to see that uh, shift to sort of as we go through the different databases in the tour queries. Um, Graham will be uh, teaching us a little bit more about this in a future uh, webinar. And then we'll get into things like uh, some customizability in the units. Uh, deleting orphan nozzles is uh, when you were carrying stuff over from very old databases. But when you get into things like um, units, here we're able to set uh, 
and now it, it used to be that people would at times struggle with my units in the database don't match my units in EarCat. Uh, and it, and it, there was some tricky uh, ways to get them to catch up to each other. But now the units are set in different places. They're not reliant on each other. So it gives you a chance to go to US or metric or some blend thereof in the database editor as well as in EarCAD. So um, you can set those capabilities right in here. Okay, so that's where that's done under tools. In options, you'll see, um, you know, it's like what happens when you're looking at these from a database perspective. I was used to uh, where when I would go and open previous versions of the EarCAD database editor, it was like the one that was in EarCAD would show up in my database editor. And now the database editor, when you update that, it may show up and nothing comes in at all. I think that's a, a version or two um, behind. But then you can go into the setup options and you can come down and, and do what I did. I wanted to be able to maximize the database window on open. And I wanted to open the default database, which would be you know, the one that I'm using uh, in EarCat or maybe just the last database that I had open. Uh, so if I'm doing some database development, but maybe working on EarCat independently, um, you can change those settings in there. And then that's which database you see when you open the program. Uh, and then there's some other customizable um, items in there. So those are all under options, uh, yeah, you know, and uh, that type of thing. And you've got some little customizations that you can do to make it look the way you want. Uh, also, you know, I will tell you, there's an enormous amount of help um, in this uh, help screens that uh, the team in New Zealand has put together, really done a great job of getting lots of help for all of us in the help screen. So uh, watch the webinars, call EarCAD support whenever you need it, or send us an email to uh, get support through um, EarCAD at nelsonirrigation.com. But, um, but there's a lot of there's a lot of help in the help menus that you'll have in your database editor as well. Okay, so if you have questions, please do send them in to through uh, during this webinar to the Q and A section, and we'll we'll get them answered. So these are the different um, aspects of this particular database. This is one that you should have a copy of when you got your CAD. It's just the tutorial database, and I can know that because if I look up here, it tells me which database um, I'm looking at. It's right up here at the top. And uh, so you can see that. And then if I go into, the, let's say, oh, we'll start our tour here with pipes. Any one of these, uh, before we open any particular component, you'll see that this screen shows a description, a warehouse code, a supplier code, and then a usage code, uh, meaning um, what it's called in the description. Uh, what is the warehouse code for that particular item? Supplier codes we don't use so much uh, commonly, or most folks don't, but usage codes you use all the time. Note these things are customizable from this very window. So if we wanted to change the name of this four inch uh, aluminum wheel line tube, um, uh, we can, uh, you know, maybe it's a premium one something like that. We've got a certain, I think there's 32 characters or something there we can spend, but it's these are editable right from this screen. This is especially helpful with things like the warehouse code. When you wanna change a lot of warehouse codes, you can read these. And if you're setting up mass databases and being able to export the EarCAD uh, parts lists um, using your own warehouse codes, very helpful to be able to edit a lot of these without having to uh, open each independual component. Supplier codes, usage codes, very important for um, the uh, different pipe sizes, things like that. Where can these pipes be used? And then getting into line types and colors is actually pretty helpful because this gives you a chance to maybe say, let's say all the two inch colors are uh, two inch pipes are the same color, but maybe a different line type, or maybe they're different line types of the same line type, but maybe different colors based on their class weight. So all schedule 40 is a different uh, color, something like that. You can come up with those just by clicking on this and changing, uh, you know, any one of these 
to different colors that set it right there. The um, I'll, I'll choose one. And then the same with the line types. We've got lots of different line types. All of these things will be editable from these main screens. Okay, so when we get into any of these pipe types, if you want to select an item in the database editor, you do it from these uh, buttons just to the left of the description. That will open your ability to edit pipe. Uh, and then, you know, we can, of course, change the description of any of these things here. Uh, so make it the description that you wish. For pipes, you get the ability to have it not available. So you can have pipes in your database that are not selectable for a particular use in ERCAD, but you might want to use as part of a assembly item, let's say, as an example. So it's not uncommon to have a uh, pipe that's not selectable by ERCAD, but you still kind of want to have in the database. Um, but then you can come up with it's for use as a lateral pipe. That would be a pipe that's going to have uh, sprinklers on it, or it might be a drip, uh, you know, a pre-built uh, dripper line, thing like that. Um, we've got a zone pipe, which would connect all of those to, together, uh, those types of pipes, uh, but be downstream of a control valve uh, is an option. Um, or a mainline pipe, that would be uh, a pipe that we want to be able to use on the upstream of a control valve. Uh, when it's uh, downstream to connecting the water source to one of the zone control valves. Uh, a flush pipe, so this would be, let's say if you're doing drip tape designs and you want to use a, a certain pipe type for a flush manifold, this would be an F uh, flush type. And, and with the exception of F, uh, you can go with using any of these in combinations thereof. A U is an unconnected pipe type, and so it could be also used uh, as a uh, connecting lateral pipes, but maybe where you want them to be changing sizes. So maybe not a polyline, but you might have PVC pipes that you would use as a zone pipe or a unconnected uh, spray line pipe. Okay, and then lots of combinations thereof. So that's what those mean. Uh, you can change your warehouse codes here in addition to uh, on the main screen. Um, these are the pipe types selections. Uh, and these are all ones that will have been developed in your pipe fitting matching table. So if you need a new pipe type, because let's say it's a, a type of riser that's used for only connecting between elevations of pipe, like for a, maybe you're doing a dripper line in uh, a vineyard or something, uh, and you want to be able to get from a PVC submain uh, or a saddle would be a common way and then get up to where you're uh, going down, let's say a, a cordon wire or something for your drip zones, then uh, you will have maybe a, a special pipe type that you've created just for that where it's only it's selected. But these is where you would choose those. Then we get into nominal diameters. The nominal diameter would be something like 0.75 or 5 inch or you know, uh, whatever it is, but that is only used for fitting selection. So when you're going to use a pipe type for a fitting selection, that's your nominal pipe type. So it looks for fittings that is that same nominal pipe type. But then we get into actual diameter of pipes. Actual diameter of pipes is where uh, you're going to be going through uh, the math. So in your roughness coefficient, I think uh, this was alluded to a little bit earlier, but we've got what is this when you want to shift from this pipe type to something else is going to be around your PSI. So when you get into a certain pressure and you want to shift, and this would be in ag system for larger pipe diameters commonly, uh, where you might want to go from a 200 pound pipe to a 125 pound pipe. And but but maybe you don't say 125 or 200, you might have you know, 75 PSI, and I want to go to this other one. It's the 75 PSI that you want to shift at that you'll be putting into this database here. And then these are uh, commonly just going to be weight per 100 feet because we need it to be relevant. And these uh, we've discussed already. Okay, so that's the pipe database. Uh, we'll get into pay, uh, uh, tapes here. Uh, there can be a lot of different tapes, and we'll look at uh, what these look like. Of course, this would be a lateral. Uh, is your only option for tape because it would be used in that scenario. This would be your warehouse code uh, for this particular tape that you've added into your database. What is the warehouse code when you're going to sell it to someone or you're going to enter that code into your 
uh, quoting software, the warehouse code you're going to enter, that's the one that you want to have in your warehouse code. Um, maybe who you buy it from would be the suppliers, and you can have lots of them, uh, but uh, it's not common to be able to, to use these really. Uh, pipe type, again, is what's come uh, from your uh, pipe fitting matching table in your CAD that you're going to use for this type of product. The nominal diameter, as we've said, just like in the pipe database, used solely for um, fitting selection. Uh, then your actual diameter and the uh, uh, roughness coefficient in hydraulic calculations, allowable pressure, uh, that type of thing. When you're getting into the wholesale retail costs here, this is the kind of thing you would choose. You're not actually asking ERCAD to solve for a drip tape size or drip tape line. You choose that as the designer, just like you would a sprinkler. You would choose a certain, you know, plate nozzle configuration or nozzle size or something like that. Uh, and you do that with tapes too. So um, the cost here becomes less of a factor because it's you selecting it, you as the designer. But over here, we get into a more important things so that you as a designer expecting your CAD to use this hydraulically in design, what is your common default inlet pressure. You can change that in your CAD with this design, but you're going to give it a default to work with. And then what is the minimum and maximum pressures that that drip tape can be used at? So this would be defaults, let's say, uh, or the, you know, the high and low end that comes from the manufacturer that you want to use this product within this range. And they'll provide that. And then that information goes here. But then the zone pressure tolerances, 10% above, 10% below, and uh, Graham went through this, I think, um, in an earlier, maybe it was Mike, but we've gone through this in an earlier webinars, but you need to make sure that from your pressure that you set it at, uh, and these variations above and below that number fall within these um, maximum and minimum pressures. So if you're getting errors in ERCAD that tell you you've exceeded the design pressure uh, and you've checked your reporting, then go back into your CAD databases into this place and check to make sure that those are constraints are correct. And if they are indeed correct, then you need to look how it's being used in, uh, in your CAD. What is your, you know, because it's giving you feedback that you've asked for. And so you will be paying attention to that. But this would be the place to double check that to make sure that you're getting the information correctly. Here we've got nominal specific discharge rate in US GPM per 100 feet, which is the units that I would be uh, using here in uh, the US. And uh, so you could set that up for whatever this tape product might be. This would be done for nominal calculations. You can say, well, I've got a, you know, so many thousands feet of this particular product. So those zones will be requiring this much uh, in flow rate. And that would be the, the sort of first blush at it. But then you get into flow calculation types and your emitter constant and indexes. Uh, all of this type of information uh, is where you, um, you would get this. If you were, let's say, entering a, a specific emitters, uh, then you would get these types of informations from uh, entering the information out here. So that's why we have a curve fitting utility. So when you're entering a new sprinkler or a new dripper, you use the curve fitting utility to be able to get constants and um, emitter indexes and things like that. Uh, that's what will be described here. A trap that people fall into is, is that they'll just start entering flow and pressure, but not double check the units in the um, uh, curve fitting utility. And uh, maybe we can practice that a little bit later on in this webinar or another one when we'll be uh, working more in the databases. So uh, then you put in what the uh, emitter barb factor is. If you've got one for a installed emitter or uh, barbs, you know, if you're doing button emitters or something, how far apart will they be? And what is your minimum pressure? If it is a pressure compensating emitter, what would that pressure be uh, so that ERCAD will give you a warning, give you a heads up uh, that you're asking for. It's like if you've exceeded or fallen below a minimum pressure, you want ERCAD to tell you, enter that information there. 
Okay, so then we'll get over to the valves. Uh, when I clicked on valves, you can see that the fitting utility changed to a valve centric one, a uh, valve pressure loss through, uh, through the valve at certain flow rates. Um, and so that makes the curve fitting utility, of course, is keeping up to date with you. And if you want to add new valves, this is where you do it with different flow rates. What would the pressure loss be through that, uh, through that valve? And then, of course, you wanted to make sure, and this would commonly be when the valve is fully open, uh, not when it's pressure reducing. That happens at a different place, but um, these would be fully open valves. So when we look inside of, uh, let's say, a... Um, you know, we'll just look at a three inch valve here. Um, one, is it, uh, uh, can you use it or not? Maybe this is a particular valve, but when you're entering control valves, these are valves that you may also have in other hydraulics, which we're gonna look at in a moment. But when you grab this valve from either the mainline uh, or zone pipe drop down menus in IRACAD, these are our valves you're going to place, and this is the only valves that can be selected from either both uh, mainline or uh, or zones. But when you place those in your design, they are management units. So, you know, when we've looked at doing zones for different uh, blocks, these are all stored in your control valve menus. And so, when, when if we were to choose this particular three-inch electric valve. Um, EarCAD's going to expect you when you do the management before you do design, uh, it's going to want you to tell it before you do mainline design uh, where you use these valves and which ones go together. You're going to have to account for their management. Okay, so some of these things we've looked at already. What's new here is uh, connection type style. So for this particular valve, let's say, you know, maybe it's a national pipe thread, it's a female uh, 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 valve and um, that it's a thread style. So it would look like um, NPT. So it's gonna look for a fitting that's a three inch national pipe thread male thread fitting to go into that. So like a three inch male adapter uh, would easily go into that. There's flange styles, there's lots of other stuff. We're gonna look at more of that in a moment. If you want these labeled, uh, you can do that and um, uh, IRACAD will um, uh, use these labels if you want for the zone control valves. So you would enter that label there. That'll be covered in a different, um, how you access this information from within IRACAD would be covered in a different webinar. We get down into the head loss constant indexes and intercepts. All of this information comes here in uh, this information. And so let's uh, create a valve here real fast. I'm going to switch my units from a USGPM and uh, PSI loss across the valve. And let's say we're going to do a valve uh, and a three inch valve. Maybe we've got, um, you know, 150 GPM US gallons per minute. And there's a 0.5 PSI loss at uh, 275 GPM. We've got um, one not 10, one uh, PSI of loss and at uh, 350 GPM, uh, I've got 2.2 PSI of loss. Uh, you can see this constant, this K and N, the constant in the index information that it sees over here is stored in this side of the current. And then if I hit fit curve, it gives me a calculation error and an R squared number. This R squared number indicates uh, the sort of fitness of the curve and where I fall in the curve. Um, and the closer to 100%, the better. So if it's below a certain number in the 80s, it's just going to refuse to take that. That You need to go back and take another stab at it. The curve's not very good. I just guessed at some numbers. But um, this would be the constant index for this particular valve. If these were your characteristics, uh, and instead of having to cut and paste that, you could just hit uh, this green arrow. It enters that information then here, and it's now reflected in the constant and index in your database for this particular valve. So we would have just created a new valve uh, for this database. There is no intercept uh, for this particular valve, meaning there's uh, at very, very low flows, you know, above zero and gallons per minute, uh, the curve doesn't start at uh, some uh, some friction loss, it starts at basically uh, zero and goes up from there. 
uh, as we've described it. And then you're going to give it a flow range. It's like basically this um, EarCAD will use it wherever you want, but it's going to give you a heads up, give you a, a, a sort of red flag waving if you've used it outside of a range. So this gives you a place to describe to EarCAD, I want to use that valve somewhere between this flow and that. And so for a three inch valve, it may be something like, well, you know, 100 to, you know, uh, 400 GPM. Uh, make sure you don't, I want to know EarCAD if it falls outside of that scope. So that's what you'll be doing that. Uh, holes, because you're choosing these, uh, the wholesale prices don't really matter that much. Uh, this is where you would choose the uh, valve uh, symbol that you want for that particular valve. Uh, these are the ones that you can choose from that are in EarCAD. And of course, you can create your own valve symbols if you'd like, and then save those as database symbols. Um, and there's some uh, uh, forum information on what size they should be in the help menus of EarCAD to tell you how uh, big to size those when you draw them initially. But there's, uh, you know, how we could choose that. And then there's a symbol size, uh, and that's a dimensionless unit. This goes back to the miscellaneous ear, ear, area under uh, ear, ear CAD settings. When you go to the settings menu, uh, under miscellaneous, you'll get a, um, a database symbol size settings that ha that's got a, a unit of feet in it. Um, it's maybe you know um, small symbols up to big. So maybe you got somewhere between five and a hundred or whatever feet. Uh, and these uh, dimensionless units will go to that. So it, where in AirCAD settings you'll have a dimension that's got a unit associated with it. Here it doesn't, and a number of five would mean I want this symbol to be 100% of whatever that miscellaneous setting is in my EarCAD settings. Uh, and it can be down anywhere from one up to 10, and one would be 20% of that base database symbol size. Five would be uh, 100%, and it goes up in increments of 20%. So six would be 120%, three would be 60% of that base database symbol size. So you can see how you do that up to 200% um, at a number 10. So that gives you a chance to make things relative to whatever the base database symbol size. Um, and that's really actually another touch point with the database and EarCAD. Oh, that I might have mentioned earlier on in the pro in this webinar, but that's a very important aspect to that. And then what color do you want this symbol to be? And then you can uh, choose to save that or not. Other hydraulics, these are other valves, uh, you know, that we can look at. This is how we would set it very much like the other valves that we just looked at, except these, while they will have a symbol associated with them, are not control valves. So these would be gate valves that we may want to use for isolation valves, uh, that type of thing um, that may have a hydraulic component to them, but aren't going to be, we aren't going to be required to add them as a, um, uh, as a management unit in uh, EarCAD. And I believe this would also be the place where we would add things like uh, pressure controls for our valves. So we would do uh, that type of thing here. And also notice uh, in this, we've got uh, assemblies can be placed there. In this case, we've got a wheel line mover assembly, and, and this will be covered in a later webinar. But you can see when we do assemblies, those items in the assemblies are listed down here. Uh, lateral takeoffs. Lateral takeoffs um, are any of these things. And when you look at a database, you'll see the stuff listed, and uh, it's very uh, obvious as what goes in there. Um, and if we look in the databases, you can see that in this case, for a lateral takeoff, this would be common of things where you're ending a tape and going it right into something like a PVC pipe or a lay flat hose, that type of thing that would be your zone pipe. Um, and so you describe what kind of fitting it is and then what kind of um, fitting you put it into. So whenever you see things like a major pipe type and a minor connection type, this is very much like a T. Okay, so here I've just got a PVC T. Whether it's for lateral takeoff or a T or a saddle, uh, any of those types of things, the 
uh, major pipe type is the one that you can see through, and the minor pipe type is the leg that comes off of that. That's always the case, okay? So sometimes it matters, sometimes it doesn't matter, but in, a, in the case of a lateral takeoff, uh, that's a really important bit of information. My uh, major, uh, let's see, get it in front of the camera here. So the major uh, pipe type is the pipe type that you see through, and minor goes into that. So in this case, we've got a minor connection type where we've got the drip tape coming into it. What are we going to connect to? Uh, that would be an LDTP pipe in this case, because it's just a grommet fitting for a drip hose. And then the uh, uh, major pipe type would be, let's say, maybe at times uh, PVC or a, uh, you know, a lay flat hose, some pipe type that you'll have created. And then there's a, uh, the only thing is a minimum sub main diameter. So some of these grommet fittings can only go into so small of a pipe. You could put it in a four inch pipe, but you can't put it in a three quarter inch pipe because the grommet's too large for that. So that's why you just describe it as a minimum sub main diameter or larger. And then this lateral diameter is uh, uh, corresponds to this um, minor connection type that is the leg that goes out, not the one that you would see through where to T. Okay. Uh, we'll continue on. Uh, connections are anything that connects, uh, couplers is anything that connects two pieces of uh, pipe in a straight line. So uh, this has got a huge collection of things, anything from a coupler, uh, you know, uh, to male adapters, um, you know, that type of thing. Uh, flanges are stored here. A lot of the different uh, stuff, including things like um, uh, figure eight ends for your drip tie, uh, or if you're going to end the pipe in any way, caps, PVC cap, they all go in places like this. So let's, um, you know, look at uh, one like I've got in my hand here. So here we've got a three quarter inch male adapter that would fit into the coupler database. It is selectable. We put a warehouse code in there. Uh, and then what is our major connection type and minor connection type. So in things like a, um, this is a, a reducing bushing that's slip, uh, uh, spig by um, a thread, you know, in this size, we've got a three quarter inch male adapter right there. Um, and so you just describe these certain ways. So this one would be a three quarter inch slip by male uh, national pipe thread. Uh, and so let's say we're going to go our, and here we've got, it doesn't really matter which side is which, uh, you just have to be consistent. So uh, major connection style, let's say the way we would commonly think through it is what I would normally do. So I'm going to call this one a uh, PVC female slip uh, by uh, NPT, National Pipe Thread Male Thread. Okay, and so that would be what I would think of with a three quarter inch male adapter uh, for our major and minor diameters. Both of those would be three quarter inch. And so that would be me describing this uh, three quarter inch male adapter for use in, you know, the US or Canada or places that use um, these types of fittings. So a huge bunch of, uh, of different things in uh, and then ending stuff. Let's let's look quickly at a cap. I see a cap down here. Um, when you go into things like the end of pipe, we've got a inlet for our major connection type, and then the minor connection type is blank. There's no information in it at all. And then it, EarCAD knows that that's a cap that ends a pipe. There's nothing that exits it. And that's how EarCAD sees things like uh, figure eights that end a poly tube or that type of thing. Okay. Elbows and bends. So it looks a lot like couplers, but these things are not straight. So uh, in here, we've got a lot of it like a coupler, but there's a bend angle. So um, when you're looking at 90 degrees or 45 degree elbow, I've got an example here of a street cup, a street elbow. This would be a half inch, uh, you know, female thread by male thread, 90 degree elbow uh, that you could um, describe in EarCAD. But here's a, um, uh, uh, this one's a compression elbow used for a certain pipe type, two inches in and out, but a 90 degree bend. So when EarCAD looks at the, where it's bending this way or that, if it's bending 90 degrees, it's gonna look for elbows like this, okay? And that's uh, where we describe elbows. 
T's are very much like elbows, but there's multiple diameters. Um, well, we could add multiple diameters, I think, now in elbows as well, um, because sometimes you have, uh, uh, you know, comp uh, reducing adapters or reducing elbows. Here we've got T's where you can describe them. Again, we're remembering uh, the major diameter is the one that you could see through, and then the minor diameter is the one that exits out of the T that you wouldn't be able to see through. Uh, but you can describe that here, and then EarCAD will know how to use those T's. Crosses, uh, a lot like T's, but you've got, uh, you know, still a major diameter, minor, minor diameter, and honestly, it doesn't matter. Uh, it, just as long as you're consistent, and when you describe a, a certain diameter uh, pipe type here, that it matches that. So if you've got a reducing cross in this example, that you've got your minor diameter paired with your minor pipe type up here. That needs to be consistent across uh, T's, elbows, uh, that type of thing. You can put pumps in your um, uh, database. Uh, there's a lot of information in here. Of course, the curve fitting utility is doing its job. It's keeping up with uh, what we would expect uh, as far as these different curve fittings. You've got a lot of them here. Make sure you're choosing the right one. EarCAD tries to anticipate that, or the database editor tries to anticipate that. Um, but you can enter the pump curve information here, uh, inlets and outlet connections type for, you know, the inlet and outlet of that uh, pump volute, what size they are, and uh, the curve fitting utility information into that, uh, the flow range for it, a lot of information that you can enter there for pumps. Outlets uh, can be here too, and then you start to see the nozzles associated with that particular outlet. Um, which we're going to look at nozzles in a moment. Let's look at a, you know, an impact sprinkler. Uh, this is an F33S, uh, an old impact style that that we made long ago. What is its inlet connection type? That could be described, or it doesn't have to be described. Sometimes you're uh, fitting it into an outlet connection. We're going to look at it in a moment. And then, uh, what is its default nozzle? You can choose a default nozzle. Of course, that's always changeable. But when you choose a default nozzle, that means when you select it in EarCAD, it's going to show up with a nozzle uh, and know what that is initially. So that's that's a good thing to do. Uh, what is its inlet diameter? That's the threaded part that goes into the base of the sprinkler. And then there's an arc type. So if it's a full circle sprinkler and there's nothing you can do about it, whether it's in your landscape or in a, on a farm, uh, it's going to be, but you can't change the uh, sprinkler arc. That's a fixed type. Then you've got a variable type, and that has to do with things like the precipitation rate. So let's say if it's a big gun sprinkler and it's got a one inch nozzle, but it's an SR100, you know, big nozzle for it. If you can change the arc on that a little bit, um, and then as you change the arc, the precipitation rate would be changing. That's a variable arc type for your sprinkler. Um, if you get to a match precipitation rate arc type, that would be something like an MP rotator that as you change the arc on it, the flow rate in it changes. And so you keep a matched precipitation rate. Um, and But it is changeable. So we've got fixed arc types, variable arc types based on the, the nozzle size. The flow rate doesn't change, but the arc might. Uh, the match type is the arc can change, but the flow rate changes in concert with that. Um, or we can make it a demand point. When you make it a demand point, it's going to be something you give it a flow rate and you give it, although it's editable in EarCAD when you place that, but it would be something like a pivot point. And you could call it a pivot point. And then when you place it there, it'll say, I, I'm going to start with 700 gallons per minute at, at 65 PSI at a certain point. Again, editable, but that gives you a certain demand point that you want to be able to meet in EarCAD. Um, so that's what that's what these different types of things mean. Uh, what's its default pressure and watering arc? And then when it's used, when you use that outlet in EarCAD, what is its default flow tolerance? So remember, there's there's a pressure variation that we're going to use in nozzles, an, uh, an emitter index that's associated with the nozzles. But then when we use this for a flow variation, based on the nozzles that we choose, because sometimes they're FC nozzles, a flow control nozzle, sometimes they're not, but they can both be maybe used in the same sprinkler. What is the flow variation that we're going to allow in a zone when we choose this particular sprinkler? 
And then because we're going to see the sprinkler potentially on the, you know, we won't necessarily see the nozzles. We don't have to see the nozzles, but sometimes you're going to want to see the sprinklers. What uh, uh, symbol would we use? And again, what symbol size would we use? Customarily, an outlet would be a smaller symbol than would lay, say, a valve or something, uh, something that's more significant in the design because there's lots of sprinklers, fewer valves. So uh, you would maybe have a smaller number uh, for that here. Okay, so that's uh, what a look at outlets. Outlet connectors are the things we use to connect the outlets to their lateral tubes. So, you know, here's a uh, little galvanized pipe riser. So you would describe this here, a lot of these things uh, we've talked about. Uh, one that's new here for the outlet connection is the height above the ground. So let's say you're doing a frost system and are cooling for apples, and this may be a really tall riser because IRCAD wants to be able to do the calculations right to the sprinkler. It needs to know how high will the sprinkler be mounted relative to the soil level. So, you know, maybe it's uh, 16 feet in the air or something. And then there's an equivalent length. Uh, diameter and equivalent H uh, head loss and equivalent length. So you might say going up through this, it's as if, because maybe you've got a couple of elbows built into this particular riser or something, it's as if I was going through not just the height above the, uh, the head pressure to get to this height above the ground, but it's as if I was going through, you know, 20 feet of three quarter inch pipe. And it will do the calculations to make sure you're getting as accurate a nozzle pressure as you can possibly get. EarCAD is that good, but you do need to be able to include this information in your EarCAD databases. And that's why it's so important to spend the time in the database editor to make this stuff right. Uh, if you needed to use wires in your designs uh, and get it out into the parts lists, uh, this gives you a place to do it. Um, EarCAD does not size wire. I, I know that we've got resistance ohms and voltage ratings and things like in there, but those are not used in EarCAD. So all you would really use for wires if you did want to do that is this, um, you know, put in a description, put in a warehouse code so you'd be able to get it, uh, you know, and then choose line type and color if you wish it. Um, you know, the same with controllers. Um, it doesn't choose the controllers. Uh, you would be choosing this information, but, uh, you know, that information is in there. So if you can get a symbol if you wish it and a uh, part number. What I wanted to show you in this is had you done a very large database merge and you had lots of information in your database, uh, we're almost done here, you can select a lot of different things. I'm just going to push the, select one, push the shift key down, and I'm going to go to hit my delete key. And it would say, are you sure you want to permanent delete all those items? And I can say yes, and it will delete a lot of information out of that particular database. So when you're doing this database editing, it's a simple uh, select, shift, click again. You can select a lot of items. You can uh, control and click and select uncontiguous items, but that's a little help in doing database editing if you need to delete a lot of items at once. Uh, lights, you don't really use that uh, so much uh, in irrigation design. Um, uh, other electrics, uh, you might use that. This would be a place where you store things like the uh, twig controllers that, tw that you may be placing out in the field that would want to have a symbol associated with it. Because uh, when you open these items up, you can see that they uh, have a symbol associated with that. So there you would have things like twigs and uh, for doing wireless systems. And you would have the wireless controllers for the twig MC, et cetera, uh, stored under controllers. Uh, miscellaneous is a huge um, assimilation of different items that you would be using largely in assemblies. Uh, that you would pair with other things. You can see there's no place to put a symbol here, but you can select it if you wish it. Uh, and that would be because it would be used in, uh, you know, things like assemblies, but you wouldn't be using it um, for fitting selection. And then there's nozzles. Uh, this, you can see we're keeping up with that part of the database here. And in any of these nozzles is where you would be using the curve fitting utility to enter the nozzle, what is its warehouse code? And then you give minimum, maximum pressures, the radius equation, because when you're doing things um, like just a straight nozzle, but even if it was, a, let's say an impact nozzle, your flow rate is gonna change, or not the flow rate, the flow rate will be consistent, but your radius may change based on what the 
uh, trajectory is out of that impact sprinkler. And so you'll see we've got radius constant indexes plus flow constant indexes as well. So those are all described by the curve fitting utility you choose here. So here's the one you would use for outlet flow. There's the one you would use for outlet wetted diameter. All of that stuff is calculated here in the curve fitting utility and then entered into these boxes here. And then of course it's arc. Uh, 360 would be common, uh, you know, unless you've got this set one for a smaller. So that's a, a tour of the ERCAD databases. I'm sorry it took a little bit longer than I want, but I'll, uh, hutch, I'll stop my share, send it back to you, and um, maybe you can uh, wrap things up. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Um, now I'm struggling to get my controls to work. <laughs> sorry. Yeah. Uh, so thank you very much, Steve. That was a great overview on ERICAD. And we will, our next uh, ERICAD webinar is on Tuesday and we will continue with the databases and go into the how to configure them to get an accurate materials list and we'll go into assembly. So thank you very much for attending and we'll see you in a few days time.